kind of a cool morning here in the mountains of southern Appalachia. I've come out to check on the garden. We do have fall things going and growing, even though, as you can see me, there's a lot of uh, dead stuff that needs to be pulled down. We've not cleaned out all the beds. That's something on our list that we need to do. But we do have quite a bit of stuff growing. So underneath the Arch of Death here, and now it's the Arch of Death. Back in the summer, it was beautiful with green cucumbers growing up it and melons growing up it. I have pulled out all the melons. I did that a long time ago. But you can see some of the cucumber remnants still here, some of the tomato remnants. And then on each side are all my pepper plants that have definitely died uh, with all the cold weather that we've had so far. And they need to be pulled out. We just hadn't got to it yet. But in the middle of all that, I do have some things growing. So I have a whole, two whole rows of turnips right here that are doing really good. And if we look at the, down at the bottoms of them, I'm not sure that they've started heading up any yet but we could definitely already be eating turnip greens from these. So these are doing great right here. In the winter though, things do grow slower because the sunshine, you know, there's not as much sunshine, there's not as much warmth. Typically, ones that I plant later like this, maybe we'll eat a little bit over the winter, might eat some of the greens and then eat some of the turnips, but typically by spring, by early spring, maybe next February, end of January or something, I'll have turnips that I can come out and harvest. And I usually always, as I'm preparing beds for the spring plan, when I'm really getting excited about planting those early things, I usually have to harvest turnips before I can actually plant in certain areas of our garden. So right outside the greenhouse here, of course I have my two green stalks that have some uh, strawberries in them. And these two grow bags, I planted strawberries in them. And they are, they did live. I've, I've been having to water them, especially uh, towards the end of the summer. I've got some weeds growing in that one. But you can see they're all the ones that I planted, they're living. So hopefully next year I'll have, you know, these will continue to spread and fill these up. The best thing that people I've seen people use, I think it would work good, is like a swimming pool, like a kitty swimming pool. And then I could put a bunch in it all together and kind of have them kind of protected from weeds and stuff, but also large enough that they could kind of spread on their own. But these are working pretty good, just like this. So here's a pepper plant that definitely needs to be pulled up. And these are carrots right here growing. And I planted these on a day that I didn't, I, I was afraid they wouldn't actually come up. They did, they probably need to be thinned. I hate thinning stuff though, I just hate it. There's some weeds in there too. But um, I meant to come back and plant, I thought if those come up, I'll come back and plant another row behind them. But as you can see, I, I never did get that part accomplished. So here's two more grow bags of things that we have going. And this is two different kinds of kale. No, actually, I think it's the same kind of kale. This one's a little different. Uh, but we love kale. So we've been, you can see where I've been snipping off the, I've got dirt all over me now, but you can see where I've been snipping off the uh, leaves of kale as I harvest it. We love it. The chickens love it. And then as I do that, new little sprouts will continue to come out on these all winter. And again, it grows slow because it's not as, you know, it's not the ideal temperature it's not well actually kale likes it being cooler like this but for us it's mostly the lack of sunshine because of living on the north side of the mountain we even have less sun in the summer than I mean in the winter than we do in the summer and even in the summer we're kind of lacking for sunshine sometimes but um, but I love that it's here and it's growing and I can come out here and get some for a salad Corey's been eating it in some of her salads of course I can cook it uh, I sometimes when I'm uh, head out to the chickens in the afternoon to feed them in the evenings, I pick them a few leaves and throw to them and they really enjoy it too. So along with those containers over there, those grow bags full of kale, I have three more right here. So we love kale. So we have plenty of kale growing. And again, you can kind of see where I've um, snipped off the pieces and where it's coming back out around the edges. In that first basket, or grow bag, I said baskets, really a grow bag. That's miner's lettuce. So it's kind of, it's been very slow, but it is growing. So I'm just going to continue to let it grow. I would love for it to grow enough to actually just take over that and kind of reseed itself. I don't know if that'll happen or not, but I'm going to, I'm going to try. So in this little bed right here, I have, this is where our Tommy toes were back in the summer. I have some radishes, some that needs to be pulled up, I can see. 
uh, some of them sometimes with radishes happens to me i don't know if it does to you they grow the leaves and stuff grow really really big but there's no radish there's just like a stem on the bottom or just like a narrow root it doesn't actually develop into a radish so that's what some of those are and again the chickens love them and they're edible people can certainly eat them but we would rather we prefer the kale over the radish and then i also have a line of cabbages here that i planted and so they're doing, out of all the cabbage I've planted, they're doing the best. And I think it's because they get more sunshine in the afternoon or throughout the day even. So, and even then though, it's easy to see that some of them, this is like, why is this one so much larger? And then you see some of the smaller ones. Uh, that one's doing pretty good, but then some back this way are even smaller. So, you know, there's no rhyme or reason to that sometimes. Certainly the nutrients in the soil play a, a role in that and and who knows genetics of the seed maybe but i uh, hoping that at least i'll get maybe this one will begin to head up for me looks like it's trying and maybe maybe i'll get one or two heads anyway i've never tried to grow cabbage in the fall so this is the first time for that so this is part of the the garden where you can definitely see that uh, jack frost old man winter has already decimated there's lots of places like that like i was showing you the peppers but this was my beautiful nasturtiums that were so lovely and large and you can see they've just kind of shrunk down on their self when they were frozen if you peek down in there though there is <laughs> there's still a few little leaves hiding i guess the protection it was so large of this outside which, which is really just turned to kind of slimy um, mush kind of protected some of the inner leaves so there's a few inner ones still in there but they're not gonna not gonna last long either but that's the time of the year it is it's time for for old man winter to come and kind of push everything back in the mountains of Appalachia it's amazing the growth that happens in one year and and then amazing that it all dies back in the winter that you know of course we have evergreen trees and things like that that don't but over that that new growth that happens every year it's an amazing miracle and every year i'm surprised by it come spring i'm like wow where did all this green come from and everywhere you look as the summer goes on by maybe the end of july or august you're like i'm surrounded by a jungle a jungle you know how did i start living in a jungle and then by this time of the year, this is November now, um, you're amazed as it, that it all starts receding back. You know, starts receding back. By the end of January, uh, or end of December, 1st of January, it's all gone. By then there's been enough cold weather, maybe some snow if I'm lucky, but there's definitely been enough cold weather to kind of push it all back. All the leaves have fallen off the trees. And, and that's a beautiful time of the year too though. So this is my little Mississippi pink eye pea patch here I had. Very small, very little, but we loved them. So it's definitely something we want to plant again next year. Now, what I need to do now, I've left several, I don't know, more than several. I've left quite a few, the very last ones. I've left them on the vines so that they could fully dry out before I actually harvest them. So what I will do is now I will, you can kind of hear them crinkle. They're kind of really dried out. I will, I'm not going to totally open it but you can see there the seed inside I will take these inside and then I will spread them out on a you know in a tray a newspaper whatever I hull them out and then I'll spread them out and then I'll let them dry and then we can plant these again next year or if I wanted to we could actually just eat them we could dry them out you know use them as dried peas and eat them that way too so not as many as I thought. When I first started looking, I thought there was a whole lot. So not as many as I thought. Um, and I probably should have already took them in, but it's one of those things I didn't do. But they'll still be fine whether we decide to eat them, which I don't think we will. I think we'll use them all as seed for next year. So in this part of the garden down here, I have this first little strip of green that you can see, that is mustard greens. So they're just coming on. They're growing slow, but they're coming right along. And in this little bed right in front of me is another patch of turnips. And they're growing slow too, but as just, I, I like the fall because it's a slower pace of everything when you're a gardener and you're used to going out every day and having to, 
you know, harvest squash and tomatoes and whatever it is that you need to do, pull weeds and everything else. So this way, it's just kind of slowly growing and it'll be here to eat when we need it, but it's not like I need to come out every day and tend to it or do anything to it. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know, like the turnips are doing all the work. So this little patch of turnips right here are the ones that we planted first and therefore they're the ones that are larger. And they've had turnips, like the actual turnip on them for a little bit, um, but we've not harvested them because I think it makes turnips in anything like that, whether it's mustard greens or turnips, turnip greens or the kale, all that. I think it makes them so much sweeter, takes some of the bitterness out of them if you leave them until they get frosted on a couple of times. So we've had several hard frosts now. So today, because I'm going to cook them for supper tonight, I'm actually going to harvest some of the, the turnips and pull them up so you can see. We usually grow the, um, I think this is purple globe, white purple globe. I'm sure you know what it is, but that's usually the ones that do pretty good for us. So you can see these are, like I said, the ones that we planted first, but all those little small ones that I've showed you are, already, those will eventually get here. It's just going to take them longer than it did this one. So Katie doesn't really eat turnips, so she's not going to eat any of them. So I probably won't pull them all up, but there's just another one. Let's see if I can find another big one. Ah, there's another big one. Me and Matt adore turnips, though. I like to eat them raw, but mostly, I mean, as far as cooking them, we just stew them like the potatoes. I might put a little butter, some salt and pepper, and just stew them until they're done. Here's one more big one, and that's probably going to be enough for us for supper. So I do have cabbage down here, but you can see how much smaller it is. And you can also see that something's been nibbling on it. Now, whether that's a rabbit, Corey said it was a, she thinks it's slugs or snails because she's, she's slightly obsessed with them since she has them at her house. But she may be right. That may be what it is. But either way, they're not doing near as good right here as they are in the back. And I think that's because in the beginning when I planted them, the okri was still really bushed out and it was shading them. And then at this point, the way the sun travels through the sky, they're shaded by our house. So I think this was just a poor place for fall. Now we've planted cabbage here in the summer. It does really good, but again, the you know, the way the sun goes across the sky is different in the summer. So hopefully those in the back are the cabbage that I'll actually get some heads from because it doesn't look like it's going to be these. So this part of the garden is still, there's some leftovers from the summer. And one thing that's left over is one or two carrots that I... I was, for the first time ever, I managed to grow carrots. I was so happy about it. And when I would harvest them, if there was any that I could tell that didn't have a carrot on the bottom, I just left them. I just thought, well, you know, maybe those greens, maybe it'll, it'll still develop into a, a root now that I've pulled out ones around them. So that's what I've done. So there's two big carrots right here, and I'm going to pull them up. But as I was going to pull them up, I noticed that there's also something's been eaten on these. So I don't think that's a snail. So now I'm thinking, and I don't really think that's a rabbit. I wonder if it's a deer. So I don't know. We'll have to ask Matt's opinion on that, what he thinks it is. We have been seeing a doe in our driveway, so very well could be. I wonder if I could. So there's me, a big carrot. And again, these were planted, <laughs> these were planted actually like last February. Ooh, look at that one. Let's see if this one's big enough to pull up. Oh, I'm going to break it. It's really hard. I'm going to have to dig around it and get me a shovel or something. This one's, oh, let's see, it's a little fat one. These are, these are calling to me about like a carrot cake or a carrot bread or something. That would be really good. Some of these carrots are beautiful. I want carrots. <laughs> I've never what? grown carrots before. It's the first time. So beautiful. All right, let's see. Oh my gosh, this one's so big. Oh, what a carrot. It only took a year to grow. <laughs> Not really a year. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing they're going to be really strong. But it was good that I left the ones when I pulled up the ones, you know, at, all through the summer as we harvested. 
and the ones that didn't have anything on them, I could see kind of pull the dirt away. away. I'm glad I left them because now look. That Ain't should that... win the county fair prize. <laughs> Corey thinks it should win a fair uh, county fair prize. I don't think so. It's but beautiful. I am. I've never grown carrots till this year. I'm so blessed and so amazed. I want to show you this kohlrabi right here. You can see it's pretty tall. I see a worm right there on it too. That's what's been eating it, so I'm gonna dispatch the worm. But I wanted to share a story about this kohlrabi. So I actually planted this, not last year, not like, not this this year, not this spring, but the spring before that. And we that was the first time I'd ever planted kohlrabi. And, and they did pretty good and we enjoyed them. We mostly just eat them raw. But this one uh, and a few others that I noticed, but now they're all gone. This is the only one left. They didn't really develop into a kohlrabi on the bottom. It's more like a, just like a kind of a mass of roots or something. But they had these wonderful leaves. And of course they're edible, we could eat them. But what I did was I kept, every time I would come by, I would like break a few off and take them to the chickens. And then I'd kind of forget about it and then more leaves would grow back. And then I would do that again. So I've been doing that literally for almost two years. Is that right? If it wasn't this spring, it was the spring before. I guess so, yeah. So kohlrabi is one of those plants that can stand a little cold. So depending on how cold it gets where you're at, um, but here it's obviously been fine so i like take it back to the root almost and feeding feeding them mostly to my chickens like i said you could eat them of course if you wanted to and then they grow back so it's kind of like it's now it's become a game with me i'm like how long can i keep this going and it's like i'm growing it's just one it's not like a lot but i'm growing my own chicken greens right here on this one stalk and, and I wonder how long I can keep it going. I've heard people in warmer climates, really warm climates, like maybe Hawaii or something, talk about how they can keep things going. Like they might have an okra plant or a pepper plant that's several years old, where I could never do that here where I live. But I'm doing it with the kohlrabi. So in this part of the garden down here, we planted a row of radishes. We pretty much eat all of them. They're pretty much all gone. I think I see one right there that probably needs to be got, but that's about it. That's the only one I see left. I've enjoyed them. Miss Cindy's enjoyed them and Granny's enjoyed them. Corey and Katie and Matt don't care for them and I don't think Austin cares for them either. And then right here, this row, I've went back and forth about what I think it is because I did not mark it when I planted it. It's obviously at this point, it's either a turnip, which is pr probably pretty likely, and that's what I thought it was in the beginning, uh, what I thought I'd planted there. And I have one or two over in this area where I'm at. This is a pretty big one, but I'm wondering if they're rutabagas. I've tried rutabagas last year and they didn't do anything. And then this year, uh, if that is what it is, then I would have grown my first rutabaga. But it's still up for debate whether it's that or if it's just more turnips, which I'm going to be happy with more turnips if that's what it is. Okay, here's a few. We're right kind of in the middle of the bed, but here's a few. I raked the leaves back of our multiplying onions down through here that a wonderful was shared with me by a wonderful generous person so they've not started multiplying yet but they are growing and while Corey and I was looking for these to see how they were doing we looked back in the back where my walking Egyptian walking onions are and something some kind of little tiny it's not really like a mite but there's some kind of bug all over them and so we've raked all the leaves back off of them and I think we're going to go get something and try to Kind of wash them off but i hope that that whatever that is doesn't come over here so what's wonderful about living in a place like this is you probably already noticed all these wonderful leaves and they just fall and we just leave them and then they decompose and they enrich our soil so that's wonderful but what's not wonderful is sometimes they trap moisture it wouldn't matter if there's nothing there but like with those onions back there i'm afraid they've been they were kind of covered totally by the leaves where they've kind of died back a little bit because of the frost 
um, and that may be where those bugs come from. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye on them. But it is wonderful to live where you have constant, you know, fertilizer that drops from the sky and it, it sits here all and decomposes and then we till it in, Matt will till it in. So that part's wonderful. But we are gonna have to keep an eye on that since we have on those onions. I can see them from here, just some kind of little, it almost looks like it's um, more than a bug, like it's mold until you get up to it. No, it's millions of little tiny bugs. So they're doing something to our onions. We're not gonna let them get our onions. <laughs> yeah. So I hope you enjoyed kind of seeing what we have growing this time of the year. It's November in the mountains of Appalachia. Um, and it's while it's not nothing like our bounty of summer, it's still really exciting to know that you have some food growing outside. I always encourage everyone to try to grow food, although I totally understand there's people that don't have land, they don't have access, there's people that are not able, I understand that too. Um, even here where we grow so much of our food, we're really not able to grow corn on a large scale because we don't have anywhere to grow it. Uh, and living on the north side of the mountain definitely limits the things that we can grow because we need sunshine. Corn would need that sunshine. We've tried corn before and it's, it, never, it never even reaches maturity. It never works, even different varieties that we've tried. So I understand all those things. But if it is so rewarding, even if you can have, you've seen my little um, grow bags full of kale. A lot of people do that in the summer with maybe a tomato or a cucumber or something like that. You can do the same thing. If you have one of those on your deck or your back porch or something, plant you some kale seeds. It's not too late, you can still do that. Um, and, and then you'd have fresh kale all winter like we do. So all those things are really rewarding. Just to be able to, to grow something is rewarding, to see it, to nurture the little seed. I mean, I'm, you know, my kohlrabi over there, I feel like it's my friend after all this time. But it's, it's just so rewarding to be able to start something and kind of see it go to fruition. I'm, I'm especially um, encouraged and rewarded by like the tomatoes that we start in the greenhouse and start from seed and then we put them outside when it's time and then we nurture them and we, you know, you have to weave them through the cattle panel and twine them, tie them up so they don't flop over and then harvest them and then put them in a jar and then pull that jar out on a, on a cold winter's day. But it's also rewarding just to be able to go outside and snip me two or three leaves of kale for a salad for my dinner. That's also, it's the same thing. It's just, it just gives you such a good feeling. So please leave a comment and share what you have growing. If you if you do grow in the, in the winter, in the fall like we do, if you're in a place that you can kind of overwinter things, um, or what you're looking forward to next year. I'm already dreaming about next year. If you watch our videos, you know that me and Matt have big plans about how we'd like to turn our whole yard into a garden, even the grassy places. I'm not sure we'll accomplish that between now and then, but we sure have had a lot of fun thinking about it and dreaming about it. Always, I want you to come back by as I celebrate Appalachia and help me along this journey. <music>